Hey kids, welcome back to another weekend. And uh, if you missed Wednesday, well, you've missed out on a lot. So uh, we, we just started up a new Wednesday session midweeks, and you're like, oh, I missed this first week. It's totally okay. You can still get registered and you can still complete the tasks because on Wednesday night, not only are we doing some fun live events, but we're doing a competition just like we were doing uh, for VBS. And so it's gonna be a month long competition. If you can tune in live at 5 p.m. on Wednesdays, awesome. If you can't, you can watch it later Wednesday, you can watch it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, complete the questions, complete the tasks to get your points. You have all the way until Sunday night to get those points and then we'll restart again the next week for Wednesday. And uh, so I know some of you, for some of you guys, this is kind of one of the last weeks, last couple weeks before the school year starts and, and I know many of you are gonna be starting virtually maybe some of you are homeschooling and uh, but uh, it's like the summer's gonna end and we're like what happened to summer i didn't even know that it actually started but uh, yeah the midweeks wednesday nights make sure you get registered and here's the awesome part because your parents are going to be like what i don't know if you're if you're not currently it's totally free there's no charge to it so it's just going to be fun content every wednesday night to go along with what we're doing on the weekends here. So uh, before we get into Bible, let's do what we always do, which is get on our feet and do some worship. Hey guys, hope you're doing great. We have a new verse this month. So we're gonna go, Lord, 
and click your seatbelt. You are great. You are really worthy of praise and give yourself jazz hands. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145.3, nerve. So let's put that all together. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145.3, nerve. Nice job. All right, kids, grab your Bibles and open up to Ephesians chapter 2. And if you have been with us every weekend, you know that we were in Ephesians 2 just about a month ago, and we talked about uh, the gift of God, which is us being saved. And in Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 8, it says, For grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And that was where we focused a few weeks back of just that us being able to go to heaven is a gift. And then it goes in verse 9, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And, and we're going to focus mostly on, on verse 10 today, which is, For we are his workmanship, capital H, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, last week... Mr. Aaron was talking about, you know, God being creative when he started the earth, when he created the heavens and he created the earth and the land and the sea and all that good stuff. And we're continuing this creativity all month long. And so we, we start how God created everything creatively. And then we're going into like kind of a little bit more how that applies in our lives today. Because when we look at it, like what it means to be creative, a lot of times in our brains, you know, we think like certain things are creative. Like if you look at someone who's a painter, it's like to me, like that's someone who's very creative is they paint these amazing paintings and they, they paint trees and they paint people and scenes. And it's like you look at them like, wow. Now me, I can't do that. I'm not creative in that way. Like I can't paint anything. Like it's, it looks like more like a maybe preschooler painting. It was like finger paints, terrible. And then you have people who are like m artists, like musical artists, and they create these songs and it's like, wow, it's so creative. And it's, it's so amazing that you were able to, to make that song and those lyrics. And it's just, it's such a beautiful sound. Again, not me. I can't sing. I can't write music. So if I can't write music, I can't do art, does that mean that I'm not creative? Well, the answer is no. But I'm creative in a different way, and you are creative in a different way. Now, some of you are great artists, and some of you are you know, amazing singers or amazing with music, and you can play multiple instruments, and, and maybe that's the way that God has created you talented. But for me, that's not it. And so when, when we look at this, we have to realize that each one of us is made differently. You know, each one of us is, is made perfectly unique, perfectly different. Like think about, like God could have created us all exactly the same. He could have created all men to look exactly alike, act exactly alike, have the exact same skills. And he could have created women to look exactly alike, look exactly the like, act exactly the same, almost be like robots. You know, the men are robots, all do one thing, the women. But why not? Because God created each one of us differently because we're all needed in a different way. Like all of us work together for one main purpose, and that's for God's glory. And so he created us all differently, which is creative in and of itself. It's like, it's just so amazing to think about that everyone who has ever walked on this earth is different. And even my kids who like, some of them, they look like me or your brothers and sisters and even twins are still different. 
in personality, even in the way they look, just little differences here and there. I mean, it's like there's a lot of commonalities. There's a lot of things that are the same between us, but we're still all different. And that makes each one of us creatively designed. But now when we're looking at verse 10, it's like, okay, so God made, made us each creative. Why? Well, because he's prepared something for us to do. It says we are all his workmanship. So he created us in Christ Jesus. And it says, what does it say in verse 10? For good works. So we've been created to ultimately do good works on this earth while we're here. Love God, love your neighbor, and ultimately follow that plan that God has for us. And so in doing those love God, love your neighbor, we do these good works. And now you're like, well, I don't know how I'm talented or creative. I don't know. Well, the amazing part about it is God doesn't just throw you on this earth and then say, okay, go figure it out. Because the rest of this verse says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God actually prepares for us which way we should go. Which means if we're prepared, if God has prepared where we should go, it means that we have the skills, the talents, the creativeness to do exactly what God wants us to do. So God does not want me to be a singer, obviously. Otherwise, he would have gave me that talent. God does not want me to be a painter. Otherwise, he would have gave me that creativity. God wants me to be right where I'm at today. Now, I think a lot of times, especially as kids, as adults, it's like we don't know what we want to do and we start thinking in our heads, like, what is it that I want to do? And I know that's when, when I was in college, it's like, oh, everyone's like thinking, well, what do you want to do for your career? What do you want to do for the rest of your life? And I kept thinking, and I wasn't at that time thinking like, what is it that God wants me to do? I was thinking, what is it that I want to do? And so at first, I thought I wanted to be on TV and be a sports reporter and, and go and work at a radio station and a TV station. And I did that. But that didn't last long. And I'm like, no, I don't really like that. And so I'm like, what else do I want? Well, I really like to play golf. I loved it that I really like to teach golf. And so I started doing that. And then I kept going. I'm like, eh. and then it wasn't truly until I felt called by God to be here in children's ministry. Like this is the first time in my life where I felt like, okay, this is what God has prepared for me. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't prepare me for this place because maybe God wanted me to be in that sports reporting role and then he wanted me to, to be in that golfing role and in order to prepare me for what we're doing today because obviously right now, a lot of those things that I learned in broadcast journalism and being ready for TV, I'm using every single weekend talking to you guys through a camera, doing our Wednesday nights. So some of that stuff has prepared me for where I'm at today. So, but it wasn't really, I can't truly say that I prayed about what I wanted to do with my life and I wanted to go into radio or TV and then I prayed about it and I wanted to go to golf. I think those were more decisions that I wanted to make, but God used them and prepared me in those places for where I'm at right now. And so we can save our, ourselves a lot of kind of frustration and headaches and worry if we just trust that God is going to show us where we need to go. Because it says right there, God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God is preparing the way in front of us for us to walk in it. And so if all we do is trust that God's got a plan for us, and we trust that God's going to equip us with what we need, then guess what? We'll be prepared and ready for that plan. So we shouldn't be so worried about, oh, like, you know, so many of you are so young, be worried about what am I going to do for my career and where am I going to go to college and what am I going to do and, oh, and spend time worrying about it because guess what? God has already prepared that for you. Maybe you start praying about it. Maybe you start thinking about what it is that God wants for you, but there's no need to worry. God has prepared us 
and he pre has prepared it beforehand. It doesn't say after, it says beforehand. It's not like we make the choice and then he's like, oh, let me go fix that. No, God has prepared it beforehand that we should walk in them. And so that should just comfort us and encourage us that what we just need to do is trust in God and just focus on those two things that Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor. And if we focus on that path, God will use the skills that he has given us to creativity to help us be prepared for what's going to come in front of us today and what will be in front of us tomorrow. And, and that is ultimately all we can do. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today and we thank you for this message. Lord, we thank you that you prepare the way beforehand. That everything has already been designed, everything that has already been planned, like you know the route that we're supposed to go. And so Lord, we just ask you to help us be patient. Be patient for your plan for our lives. Be patient to see what you want for our lives. Don't let us be in such a hurry to go forward and go in front of you. And so Lord, we know that you love us so much and you have created us for a specific purpose. And we love you so much in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen. All right, I will be right back with three questions. All right, kids, three quick questions before we finish up. Number one, which book of the Bible were we in? That should be an easy question to answer. Question two, this is a review question. And this is just kind of fill in the blank. It says in verse eight, for by what or blank, you have been saved through faith. So what is that fill in the blank? Simple one. And then question three is just more of a later on today. But question three is when you, before you go to bed, like what do you feel like God has prepared you for? Like what has he prepared you for today and like how he can be, you can be creative. And uh, there's gonna be something that you've been prepared for today. There'll be something you've been prepared for tomorrow. And just what has God prepared you for? And if you just think about that, you'll be like, oh, you know what? This happened today and God prepared me for that. And it's just, I think if we look at it in that way, it's gonna help us continually continue to be able to be focused on God. All right, guys, have a great weekend. We'll see you Wednesday night. If you're not registered for Wednesday, do it right now. Uh, if you didn't answer the questions from Wednesday night, watch Wednesday night right now, then go answer the questions. You're gonna need to get on that Goose Chase app again. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you live on Wednesday nights. You can jump on the chat, ask questions, talk with us a little bit, and uh, it's gonna be an, a, another fun, fun week. We'll look forward to seeing you then.